So I just don't understand it. Where did I pick up all these bed springs? I know that I would see them for a dollar or two. And I'm like, oh, I'll grab that. I'm going to make something out of that. And then the next thing you know, I have quite the pile of them. So let's do some DIYs. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds and make them over for you and share the process, what I do to these items to give them new life and to make them into beautiful home decor. So in today's video, I am springing into some home decor. I am working on the bed springs. <laughs> How about you all? Do you guys, do you like me when you see these for a dollar or two, I'm like, oh, I see so many inspirations all around me. I can create with these. So I finally decided after a recent haul where I got a few more of these, I need to create something with them. So to my Pinterest board of all the little ideas that I had saved and some that I had in my mind of what I wanted to do with items. So that's what today's video, we are springing into some home decor. The thing that I noticed about my stash of bed springs is that they're all different sizes. They're all rusty, crusty goodness, but they're all different sizes. So you just have to figure out which way it's more stable. And so for this one, the bottom going up is more stable because I want to use this, look at this aged metal funnel. Oh my goodness. Like your first thought would be to put it the other way, but it wouldn't have stayed up. It would have just fell over. This match is just made perfectly to hold some string. Is it not? Is it not? Now for the string, you could use it and then like pull it through the bottom. But this little funnel, all oh, this gorgeous metal little funnel, um, just happens to have a hole on the side. So that's actually where I'm going to go ahead and string it to. So you would have a string holder and be able to pull your string out. Yes, you are right. I do need a little pair of scissors to go with my string holder. And I may have a stash of those also. So now just trying to figure out which ones will fit in that top little hole without knocking it over. <laughs> so I, I definitely I'll have to go with some a smaller pair. Hey, I have another quick and easy one. Look at this spring. I, I tell you, they're all different from the, each other. They're all unique. And so are the funnels. Oh my gosh, look at the age of, yeah, this has been washed. This is what it looks like. It is just got that yumminess. So I'm just trying to tighten it on. And then you can bend the strings so that they look a little bit more even, or you can have that perfectly imperfect. It's whatever works for you. Just by chance, have another ball of string. It's, I can't say ball of yarn because it's not yarn. It's just string. So anyway, yes, I wish I had a little bit bigger one to fill this one up, but I think it'll still work the same. So for this one, I'm just pulling it through the bottom, and I just happen to be able to loop it over that top part so you can grab it. And now we need to pick out a pair of scissors that go with this. And now I just so happen to have these two homemade candlesticks and I don't even know how long they've been in my stash. It's funny when you're moving and all of a sudden you find things you didn't know or you, you knew you had, but you really didn't even remember. Just by chance have two matching springs. Must came off the same bed, <laughs> bed frame. But anyway, yes, but they're a little bit short for what I envision. I really want it to wrap around that bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off a little bit of the top of these candlesticks so that it frames around the bottom a little bit more.
that I have them both cut off. I want to make sure that they are even. I tried to keep my Japanese saw nice and straight, but you know, I might have tipped. So I'm just going to take my orbital sander and just rest it on the top of that and then just sand it anything down so that I know it will be even and what I might put on the top of this will lay flat. Now that is a much better fit. Like it was, these were like made for these little candlesticks. There's always a reason why they just have been in your stash for a while so but i'm not really impressed with the color the color with the rusty crustiness doesn't doesn't pop out the rusty crustiness the way that i want it to so i'm going to go ahead and get them painted up and i'm going to be using fusions cashmere i think this is a nice off-white creamish color to go with the rusty color The awesome thing about Fusion Paint is it has primer paint and top coat all in one. You put that first coat on, it kind of looks, you know, like, oh, that didn't cover very well. But once you apply that second coat, you'll be amazed. After my second coat is dry, I'm going to go ahead and give them distressing. I want some of that dark wood that goes with the rusty crustiness to pop back out. So I just have some 220 sandpaper and I'm just, yeah, what, whatever distresses is what distresses. Um, it's just newly dry. I didn't like let it sit for hours or anything like that. So it'll easily distress. And I want to make sure that I clean off any paint drips on my bottom. It's either paint the bottom or clean off the drips. So I'm choosing them to clean off the drips. do need to make another platform. I cut the candlestick off. That's okay. I wanted it to be a little bit wider anyway. So I just have this bag of, yeah, $1.29. They were just random wooden stars and they were homemade. They're that perfectly imperfect. They're a little bit uneven, which is what I love about them. So I'm just going to go ahead and give them a little bit of age using my watered down antique wax mixture. I just really love the age that that gives. So now I need to attach them to the top of these candlesticks. So I'm just going to be using this nail nailer, which actually has some staples in it. All I need to is just to attach it. I want to make sure that they're on there nice and secure. Now I could leave them as is. They're so super cute. And I know I'm covering up that cute star, but you can still kind of see it from underneath. I have these little cups that have been aged. They're aged metal. Um, I tried to get, I try out. Well, heck yeah, I was going to try, but no, there's, I could not fit the gun inside to get the angle to have it pressed to be able to staple it. So I'm going to have to glue them. So for metal to wood contact, I'm just going to use some of the Gorilla Glue, which is comparable to like the E6000. Just put a generous amount on, press it down firmly, and set it off to the side to let them dry. I have these cute little votives, though I don't think the color does anything for the rusty crustiness. So I'm going to add some color to these. So these were thrifted. Gotta love thrifted items. So I'm just using some Insta Coffee, some cinnamon, and some nutmeg to make these grungy candles. So all I'm going to do is just use some Mod Podge, like a glue, an adhesive, Elmer's glue, probably spray glue. I guess you could use whatever glue you have on hand and whatever you want to grab. This is just what I grabbed, so I'm just going to brush on it, try to brush on a nice, light, even coat. And then when I get it all around, I'm going to go ahead and roll it in that instant coffee. 
and see if I can get some of the instant coffee. The inches coffee is nice because it's chunkier than what the cinnamon nutmeg are, so it gives a lot of texture. So after I've got it pretty well covered with what it will accept with the instant coffee, I'll just sprinkle on the cinnamon and then sprinkle on a little bit of nutmeg, and I, it does smell heavenly, um, <laughs> and just get it to stick onto the rest. And I'll actually go ahead and fill in that top area too, um, just to make it all match. So I don't want any of that grungy coming off at anybody's hand, so I need to seal this in with a top coat, and I just by chance just grabbed my Weather Defense can. So now for this spring, see, I said they are all so unique, but there's, I mean, really they're strong, they're sturdy. Um, you just have to be careful that what you're putting in it does not make it tip. So I have this terracotta pot, which I'm like, well, will it stay up? Will it stay up? Because I tried an insulator and it fell over. I didn't have a strong enough one or I couldn't get the two to wind together properly to get the insulator to fit. But I do have this terracotta pot and I always love the patina of an aged terracotta pot. So now I have a little grapevine wreath that's thrifted. I love the color of this one, which goes with that rusty crustiness. Um, and I'm, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue it in because I wanna stick some floral in here, but I don't wanna use like floral foam or any type of grasses. The grass that I had was really green and I think that it would stick out too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my grapevine wreath as a filler. And now these floral stems are just gorgeous. Now the thing about them, they are very straight up. So I like to use them by cutting them up. So first I'm gonna to have to start off with cutting them off the individual long stems to begin with, and then I'll cut them down to size to fit this little pot. I like them to be staggered. I like the middle area to have some of the longer ones. So yes, it's just, it, this is just kind of an eyeball and kind of go. Um, I'm gonna fill it up first before I start using any hot glue to glue them together. Um, and then the hot glue eventually will all like keep it in there. But for, for right off, right now, I'm just kind of placing them in there. Look what I get to dig into. Thank you to the viewer who sent me these. Oh my goodness. So I wanted some rusty crusty stars and I'm like, what do I have that are wired? And yes, this garland has some wired ones that I can stick in with this. So I kind of just imagine it kind of trailing down, not necessarily coming out of where the floral is, um, I just kind of thought it would be fun to have them trailing down where the pot is along where the spring is. So I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to get it that it doesn't move around. And then I, this one was going to go right into the pot and the with the wire I can bend it in the downward position. But oh, it matches so nice.
Next up, I have these Rusty Krusty Cast Iron Heavy, they're heavy actually, butterflies. And the thing that I thought was unique about them is they actually have a little spike on the back of them. But they all three have that beautiful rust patina. So I do have two more of the springs that match. And when I was playing around with them, they kind of just rusted right on top of the spring. And I thought, I love it. I I don't see any reason to do anything else. I don't have a third one, but look at how that the three of them go together. one won't be quite as simple as that last one but I have this very long spacious one and I have one of these old wallpaper brushes and that patina oh my goodness and these two it was like they were meant to be together that was my fault I you know like I said you have to very gingerly work with <laughs> something but look at that it's the same length the handle's the same length as what the spring is it sits up perfectly and so we can put some of our decor so after seeing what I did underneath that cloche in a previous video I am loving that so I, th I thought this would be the perfect way to display some of these vintage numbers a vintage bingo sheet and some other little vintage like paper goods that I pick up that I'm just like I'm never willing to just throw in the trash. You know how that goes you just have to keep playing with the items that I have seeing what I liked I didn't like the color I thought the color was too distracting from the muted shades but I do have some more of those wired stars that I'll add in here and that I'll give that tie in to the rusty crusty spring oh my goodness I'm definitely going to I'm definitely loving on this one Oh, I hope that you're loving on this video because these are so super simple. So simple. And I know you can find springs at any, probably almost any antique store for a couple dollars. So next up, I am going to do um, something with this music sheet. I love the music sheets. I have, I always pick them up at yard sales when I see them. Look at that aged paper on the outside. So this is really simple. All I'm doing is rolling it into a cup. I'm not gluing it. I'm not stapling it. I'm not doing anything because once I get it in there, I want it to expand to fill in that space. <gasps> Oh my goodness, just love it, love it, love it. I love that you can see the, the, um, like the name of the song. Oh wow, I might fold that over, but I'm gonna wait till I start adding some florals in. And I have these beautiful aged baby's breath from Hobby Lobby stems. 
oh my goodness, but I'm going to have to leave these a little bit on the long side because I want them to go all the way to the bottom of this. So I think that this one may be my shortest spring, but I love that it has larger top and a larger bottom, so it really offsets the weight. Because I have this little birdie who is in dire need of a makeover. So, and I don't care that the paint is peeling because that'll make my paint job even look better. But, um... Yeah, so I just have to figure out, will it sit properly? I know I see a lot of these that have bird's nest in it, but that's not what I'm envisioning to put this large bird in a bird's nest. I just really want him to be sitting on the spring. But there's a lot going on on the bottom of this bird. There you got the Salvation Army tag, you got the original tag, and it's got little pieces of felt. So I'm going to go ahead and get those removed. I ended up using the heat gun to help me along, which peeled off the original paint. I just, I, I, yeah, I don't know what it said compared to something. So it, I don't know where this was purchased, purchased at or how well loved it was. So now I'm going to give this little birdie a bath. I'm going to kind of rub on it kind of hard to see if any more of that paint is going to come off. There's quite a few spaces that are missing the paint, but I don't know. Maybe this was um, outside for a while. I'm not, not really sure. So I'm going to go back to that cashmere color by Fusion. I think it's going to, I really like that color with the rust. So I already painted my bottom and the bottom of it, the birdie is dry. And so I'm just going to go ahead and finish painting it. And I think, actually, I think one coat will be pl plenty. It's grabbing right on. I tell you, Fusion Paint is so nice. This little birdie has some magnificent details to it. So I'm just going to be using Fusion's Antiquing Glaze to bring out those details. And I know I get this question all the time. Yes, there's a huge difference between the Antiquing Glaze top coat and the Waverly Antiquing Wax. Totally two different colors, two different finishes. <music> Yep, you just get it on there, get it into all those little detailed areas, and then you take a cloth and wipe off the excess. And oh my gosh, I was trying to figure out how to get my camera really close so y'all could see it. This birdie turned out just so stunning. I don't want, I was going to add, I was going to add a little bit of greenery, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to gingerly just place and twist around some of these babies' breath, I think it'll just do it justice. I don't want to hot glue it in place. Um, I just kind of want to just set them in there.
So I don't know about you all, but sometimes these spools, I can't help but pick them up. But sometimes it's hard to figure out how to display them. So I just happen to have a really long, tall spring. Oh my goodness. But I do need to help it along a little bit. So they are bendable. You, you play with them a little bit. It's strong wire, but you can... You can twist them and bend them and, you know, whatnot to get them to stand straighter and more upright. But to me, I just envisioned this as a vase, a rusty, crusty metal vase to hold these beautiful, tall spindles, spools. Oh my gosh, the aged wood goes wonderful with this rusty crustiness. I told you that some of these were just as easy as could be. Okay, so I may have had two really tall ones. And the hard thing about the tall ones, if you put weight on the top of it, it just wants to tip over. So using it like a vase is perfect. And I have just picked up these not too long ago, these beautiful pieces of wood, American flags. There's a set of four. So the $4.29 price tag, that makes them a dollar something a piece, y'all. So not crazy priced by any means but the aged wood and how they made the um handles or the pole however you want to say that um goes with this rusty crustiness oh my gosh just oh the, right there had my heart So I hope that you stayed for the last one because this is a good one. This one definitely has my heart. So yes, it's a little windmill and I, I thrifted this a while ago and I I thrifted it knowing that I wanted to do this project, but you know, you know, other things take priority sometimes. So it all depends on what your crafting in, inspirations are for the day. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just want the windmill part itself. So I'm going to go ahead and use some snips to take the welcome take the chain off take this front button thing that's just kind of hanging off there kind of sideways not quite even but yes i need to i just want to get the part with just the windmill and i just happen to have a really tall one that just has that round base the bigger base that helps it stand up but i do need to play with it a little bit <laughs> to get the wire the it to be more up straight up not kind of um cockeyed so yeah it might take a little bit like you know I, who knows where these have been through their days so um yeah so just a little bit of pulling a little bit of stretching and it it'll it might still be a little bit slighted off but not as bad as it was these two i think were meant to be together so now i have that hole in the center that i can wrap it around that top wire oh i'm so super excited so i'm going to test it out first because y'all know i'm not going to leave it that color how many already guessed right away when you saw this piece what i was going to be doing to it before i can move on to paint it i need to make sure that the hole is big enough that i'm not going to be messing up my paint job so oh look at that oh my goodness 
Yep, you guessed right, y'all. You know that I was going to make this rusty, crusty goodness to go with that base. So Dixie Belle's Iron Paint it is. Now, I did not prime this. I didn't want to change the underneath color, um, but I am going to go ahead and apply two coats of the Iron Paint because I know the first one's not really going to adhere very well. Um, I'm going to dry that in between before applying the second coat. And while my paint is still wet, I'm going to be doing the green patina spray and it's going to give it that brown, red, yummy rust color. So if you notice for this one, I covered up the entire surface area so it would be rusty crusty to match the bed spring. And now I'm just sealing that in with some weather defense. So thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think? Did I spring into some home decor or what? Very unique, unique pieces. Um, I just, I love rusty crustiness. I loved pairing it with my other junkyard finds, my thrifted finds. And I just, I don't know, I can't even, uh, from the birdie to using it as a vase to as simple as those butterflies matching and sitting perfectly what the heck <laughs> you know i just had so much fun the terracotta pot floral baby's breath you know the muted tones i just absolutely love them and that bird oh my goodness that bird's with a little bit of that baby's breath so give me a quick comment down below do you have some bed springs springing around <laughs> your house um that you have been wanting to do also and which one of the items that I made over today were your favorite? Well, which one of the items I created today were your favorite? <laughs> and have I inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way? So thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, smash that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when I've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.